you know, we're not waiting around. We're going right into the big heavy hitters to oh, start right, with. Oh, right away, and there's going to be some really good races throughout as far as the Ohio Breeders' Championships go. We have the two-year-old Philly Trotters here today. We have three-year-old Colt and Gelding Trotters also here today on the Ohio Breeders' Championship side of things. And then late in the card, race number 17, uh, could be a race that might be getting overlooked. There's some powerhouse trotters in it. It's the Ohio Breeders' Championship for age trotters. So uh, you and I were talking about before we went on air, Real, I mean, there's five or six horses in that race that can truly jump up and compete for the win. Well, myth. Austin? This was honestly one of the hardest races for us to handicap and get an idea on our picks. You and I were talking before we went on air today. A lot of these horses are competing regularly at the opens, at the raceways, and also seeing some grand circuit action. So really a loaded field here for the age trot. Uh, Ohio Breeders Championship. I really like the two Lane of Stone getting some much needed post relief today leaving from the two uh, the two hole. He had the seven and the nine his last two times out at Scioto Downs against open competition. He was the winner of the Arnie actually at Greenville back in August. And I do have a funny story about Lane of Stone. So last night I'm doing some prep work about 11.30 p.m. getting ready for today's broadcast and I text my good buddy Jeff Nysonger, the driver of Lane of Stone and I asked him, you know, Jeff, post two today, what is your plan with, with Lane of Stone? I expected Jeff to write me back, you know, in the morning when he got up and stuff. No, Jeff texted me right back. He's always so good about that kind of stuff. And he said, Austin, as far as the game plan with Lane of Stone, me and Mark Winters, the trainer of Lane of Stone, We'll get together and we'll talk strategy before a race as far as what we want to do at the start of the race, what we want to do at this point in the race, so on and so forth. But he says, Austin, once we get Lana Stone behind the gate, we can pretty much take our game plan, crumble it, and throw it out the window <laughs> because Lana Stone already has his mind made up of what he's going to do as he heads behind the post. So uh, that was really funny from Jeff Nysonger. He described Lana Stone. I asked him also, what do you like best about Lana Stone? He said, truly, he's a funny horse, and he's also one of a kind. So I'm going with the two Lane of Stone here today. Really strong. Who do you like in this well, one, Frank? Well, Lane of Stone as well. Austin, what are you looking at? Yeah, we have three divisions today of these Buckeye Stallion Series, three-year-old Colt Pacers. All of them, I think, are going to be just absolute slugfest, and we have the chance to see three really big miles with all of them. I like the four bargain shoppers as well, last year's Buckeye Stallion Series champion. Looking to repeat here in 2020 and comes into this race second in points to Snow Moon. I think he'll go front-end seeking again with Dan Noble in the bike today. The eight opportune Hanover. Uh, looks to be uh, one of the favorites in this one. Also, Chris Page uh, in the bike with Opportune Hanover. He'll have his work cut out for him coming from post eight, but I think he's really battle tested, has gone up against some sire stakes competition, and actually picked up a win with the Buckeye Stallion Series at Sayota Downs over Bargain Shopper back in August. So, last quarter in 27 and 1. If you look at his racing lines, it is 27 uh, all the way down in his last quarter. Probably the hardest closer in this whole field. So, I think Chris Page eases him out of the gate and is going to come on strong with the eight opportune Hanover. Also, uh, a good long shot pick here right now going off at 15 to 1 is the two Meadowland Bosa. Um, I talked to Chris Presley earlier today. He's starting again with a great post. Uh, the post draw, he said, has not been great with Meadowland Bosa lately, and also some of the trips he's been getting. Uh, you see a lot of circles in his racing lines, so. Um, Chris kind of feels like he's been actually ganged up on uh, a lot of times when he's on Metal Bosa because when he's on point, uh, he's really good. So uh, Chris told me he's going to be very aggressive with Metal Bosa right out of the gate. And again, he has the opportunity starting from post two uh, to sting the likes of the four bargain shopper and the eight opportune Hanover. So I think we could see a really interesting speed duel to open this one up. Oh, well, Metal Bosa now. I, I, I don't know why. I've got the one at 76 to 1 is my third choice oh, wow. today. Oh, wow. And I'm not really 100% sure, except that he's been close the last three races. A couple of seconds, a third, hasn't won, but just for some reason, I just have a feeling that he. We're going to see something big out of My Name is Harry today. Well, he did go off at 58-1 uh, to 1 here back in August with Sci at Scioto Downs with the Buckeye Stallion Series, finishing behind Opportune Hanover and Bargain Shopper in that one, just two lengths back. Um, so My Name is Harry could get up and do a really good job. My long shot favorite, um, 
at a little, not nearly a 68 to 1 <laughs> price, uh, but the 9 WF Eeyore starting from the second tier, going off at 13 to 1. Uh, I really think if you want to dig deep and get a good price, WF Eeyore is the way to go. Uh, I said it earlier for another horse. Uh, quit is not in WF Eeyore's vocabulary. He can really just grind it out. Uh, Jeff Nysonger's in the bike, really seems to be getting the most out of him. Uh, and he does have fair wins against some really tough customers that run with the Buckeye Stallion Series and are up there in the points. Uh, he does have fair wins over Never Pop the Plugs and Bargain Shopper and again competes on a weekly basis with Western's Last Gun and Epic Ace. So WF Eeyore is battle tested uh, post nine today but Jeff Nysonger is a really patient driver so um, a second tier start for Jeff doesn't really concern me much. So again if you're, if you're looking for a price out there you're betting from home right now on your simulcast app. Uh, WF Eeyore the nine horse going off at 14 to 1. But right now, the two queen of all taking a lot of betting action from all the fans out there. I'm actually going to go a little deeper and more to the outside of this field with the six just joshing. So uh, on the board in all seven of her starts this season with three wins. One thing I really like here was her experience on a half mile track this season. That was one thing I was going to say about our last race, our second jugget elimination. Lion Sentinel actually was in a qualifier last week at Harrington out in, I believe, maybe that's Delaware area I believe a half mile track out there to sharpen up to yeah, come here to Delaware exactly. so that's why yep. I did like Lion Sentinel a lot in that second elimination and that's why I'm leaning on just joshing right now so again a lot of experience on half mile tracks this season you look through the program you see a lot of seven eights and mile tracks for all the other horses uh, this year just just joshing has a win at Yonkers and at Saratoga in New York the win from Saratoga was from post seven also has post six here today at Delaware, so I'm really excited to see what Andy Miller can do right now going off at 5-2 to two odds. It looks like the second favorite behind the two, Queen of All. Well, just, I'm not sure who, who it was. It was uh, the four, McCam, I believe, uh, that got up for the win there for uh, the Aider crew, so uh, I would say that's, that's going to be uh, a pretty pretty big upset, I would have to think. Wasn't, wasn't really on my radar at all. Nope, I didn't have McCam there either. And uh, you know, at one point they were four wide, getting it was heading to the back stretch, and just uh, got a little crazy there too. Yeah, it was a big speed duel uh, opening it up against section line. Ronnie was protecting the rail. Ubuntu went out for the lead. Uh, Western's last gun out for the lead, and then Elite Machine left from the seven hole. Uh, we talked about it before the race. Was curious to see what Chris was going to do with Elite Machine. Uh, again, four wide. Four right around the opening turn, and then section line Ronnie uh, yielded to let Ubuntu by, and then Elite Machine uh, was actually the leader going to the quarter before Ubuntu uh, popped back out and overtook the lead. Western's last gun, uh, a really gutty effort there. This horse, uh, another one that's just super gritty, was on the outside there, probably the final uh, five-eighths of that mile, and just grounded out uh, for a third-place finish. It looks like it was Mc 